I know I say this at the beginning of every one of these videos, but I love Megami Tensei. There are many things about this series that I love, but one thing I can say that is consistent with every installment that I love is the monsters. Out of all the games that exist that involve collecting and summoning monsters, Megami Tensei has by far the best selection, all taking inspiration from mythologies across the world and throughout history. Some demons can be generic yet cool designs, while others can be a creative spin on something that makes you look at it in a way you never would have expected. There are just so many demons from this series that I love, and narrowing them all down to a list of my top 10 wasn't easy, but somehow I managed to do it. For this list, I'm going to be looking at a variety of factors. Everything from design to lore to usefulness in the gameplay. Now, I'm sure there are going to be a lot of demons that I miss because there are just so many that I want to talk about, but to do a complete list of all the demons that I like would take forever. So here are my top 10 best Megami Tensei demons. Number 10. Shiva. The Hindu religion is one of the most represented religions in all of Megami Tensei, and Shiva is without doubt my favorite of those demons. Shiva is one of the three main deities in Hinduism, with Brahma being the creator, Vishnu being the preserver, and Shiva being the destroyer. Because of this, as you would expect, Shiva is an absolute beast in battle, with him having access to some of the best physical skills in every game. In Persona 3 and 4, his exclusive skill is Pralaya, and in Persona 5, he's one of the easiest demons that can be made invincible to everything except for Almighty and Gun. Then there's Apocalypse, where he has the highest physical affinity of any demon except for Satan. But what I love the most about Shiva is what you have to do to get him. In pretty much every game, you get him by fusing together Rangda and Baran. Not only is this a very clever and creative idea, but it also makes him pretty easy to get. Throughout the series, most endgame demons require some insanely complicated process for fusion, but Rangda can be encountered pretty easily and Barong is in one of the easiest to fuse light races, which makes Shiva a staple endgame demon for most playthroughs. His design is also pretty faithful to the source material, but that's not a bad thing. It's a great representation if you ask me. Shiva is a demon that has helped me take down God on many occasions, and I don't think that'll be changing with SMT5. Number 9. Pixie. Even if you're new to Megaton, you probably recognize Pixie. She's a fairy from British folklore that likes to play pranks on humans. This may seem like kind of a weird choice for some of you, because Pixie is always very low level and generally the first demon you encounter. She's pretty much in the game to show you the ropes and be your first demon, but that's the thing. She's the first demon you get in every game. While all these other demons are trying to rip out your insides and eat you alive, Pixie is the one demon that'll reach out to you peacefully, show you how to communicate with demons, and will join your party for free. And, when you think about it, she's actually better than most of the demons you can recruit at the time. In both Strange Journey and SMT4, Pixie has no weakness, and she almost always learns Dia, giving you your first much-needed healing move, and that's not even getting into the moves that she learns later on. Plus, if you keep her long enough, She'll evolve into High Pixie, another good demon which only makes her useful for even longer. And all of you Nocturne fans already know that if you keep your Pixie up until the 5th Kalpa, she'll turn into Super Pixie, one of the best demons you can get at that point in the game. Combine this with a design that is simple yet recognizable, and it's easy to see why Pixie is one of the most reoccurring demons in Megaton. Number 8. Black Frost. I wanted to include at least one member of the Jack Frost family on this list, and the one I decided to go with for my absolute favorite would have to be Black Frost. Unlike other demons on here, Black Frost isn't an interpretation of any mythological fairies or gods or demons or anything like that. He's a Jack Frost that, for one reason or another, turned evil and became a lot more powerful. For one thing, I just think it's really creative that Atlas made a darker, more evil version of their own mascot. But unlike Jack Frost, who's really only useful for a short time, Black Frost is easily one of the best demons in pretty much every game, generally being resistant to physical attacks while also being immune to dark, ice, and even fire attacks. Combine this with a solid moveset, and you've got yourself a great demon. But by far, my favorite thing about Black Frost is his role in Devil Survivor 1. After being taught about, and I quote, the power of love from Midori, if you choose to side with him on the sixth day, He'll join you, not as a demon, but as a party member on the seventh day. And he's a really good party member too. 
He's the only one with resistances built in, and he has great offensive stats. And not to mention, he's just cute. Like, yeah, he's evil, but he's such a goofball about it, you just can't bring yourself not to love him. There is really a lot to love about Black Frost, and I look forward to seeing what they do with him in Shin Megami Tensei 5. Number 7. Seth. Out of all the mythologies SMT tackles, Egyptian mythology is another one of my favorites. And out of all the Egyptian gods, my favorite by far is Seth. Seth is the Egyptian god of war, deserts, storms, and chaos, and is also one of the most important gods in the religion. And it's not entirely clear whether he's good or evil. But what I like about his portrayal in SMT is just how creative Kaneko got with his design. Generally, he's depicted as what looks like an aardvark, but Kaneko saw that and he was like, an aardvark? Nah, man, let's make him a dragon, and then let's make him really, really good. But it's not just because he's a dragon, I mean, just look at this design. He's covered in spikes, he's got a snake's tongue, these... things. This design may not be a straight adaption of his original depiction, but it is really creative, and he's overall just a great demon. I first used him in Persona 3 as a fire user after I got tired of Cert. And in Persona 5, he's the first demon that gets one-shot kill. And in Strange Journey, his forma gives you both Void Electric and Void Wind. If you're ever messing around with Fusion and you see Seth in your results, give him a shot. You won't be disappointed. Number 6. Abaddon. This is another demon that's on here mostly because of how creative the developers got with him. Abaddon is the Angel of the Abyss, and he's often mistaken to be an enemy of God, but in reality, he's actually a good guy. He's even the one responsible for casting Satan into the Abyss in Revelation. In most depictions, he's a giant locust, and that's definitely not a locust, but I still think it's a great representation of what Abaddon is supposed to be. With his Nocturne design, he's kind of a... head with wings that can sort of swim through the floor, and with his other one, he's a giant... Thing. I'm not exactly sure what this design is supposed to be myself, but it is a very intimidating design. And even if you're not a fan of his design, try looking at his stats and movesets. In Devil Survivor, he's the first demon to get the extremely useful, should be staple skill, anti-most. In Persona 3, he learns all the null physical skills and absorb strike. And then in Nocturne, he resists everything except physical. Oh, and in SMT4, he evolves into Alciel, who nulls everything except Fizz, Gun, and Light. And it's not like he's hard to come by either, he can generally be fused pretty easily. Abaddon just has it all. A good design, great stats, and overall, just a very interesting and underrated demon. Number 5. Throne and Lila. Yeah, I am kind of cheating by putting two demons in the same spot, but they're both similar in design and they're both on here for the same reason, so I figured why not. Throne is one of the angels from the Bible mentioned in Colossians 1.16, which is what most of the divines are based on, while Lila is the angel of conception from the Talmud who brings the soul and seed together in the womb, and also teaches the child the entire Torah while in there. Now, these things aren't all that revolutionary in battle. I mean, they're good, but the main reason I like them so much is... Well, let me ask you something. When you think of angels, you probably think of beautiful looking people with wings, or whatever these things are supposed to be. But you don't think of these. I mean, just look at them. A guy wearing all black on a giant flaming wheel, or a woman wearing a creepy mask with black crow-like wings with a black silk hat. If you showed one of these things to the average fan, they'd probably think at first glance that they're demons, but they're not. They're angels. This just goes to show that angels don't have to be beautiful and innocent looking. They can be intimidating and scary too. I mean, why else would everyone in the Bible have been afraid of them if they didn't look like eldritch abominations? Number 4. Cert. Persona fans should already know why Cert is on here. Cert is the ruler of Muspelheim in Norse mythology, and while his design is pretty awesome, he's mainly on here because of how much of a powerhouse he is in just about every game. In Persona 3, he's one of the easiest ultimate Personas to get, and he learns both Fire Boost and Fire Amp, and is the first demon to get a severe magic skill, that skill being Ragnarok. Even if you don't put a lot of thought into fusing him, Cert is one of the best magic users you can get. He's also got similar movesets in Persona 4 and 5, but his best game by far is SMT Nocturne. In Nocturne, he's the only demon that has a Fire Elemental physical attack. 
because there's no physical booster, this is the only physical attack that can be enhanced by fire boost. But because it's physical, it can also be enhanced by focus, pierce, and bright or dark might. Fuse one of these things with fire boost, pierced, bright might, and null ice, and it's going to be doomsday for any enemy that doesn't reflect fire. I don't know what it is about him that Atlas loves so much, but he is just a consistently great demon in just about every game, and I don't think I've ever had a bad experience with him as an ally. Number 3. Giramakala. If you've seen any of my challenge runs, you should already know why Giramakala is on here. Giramakala is an evil elephant from Sri Lankan Buddhist mythology, who is the steed for everyone's favorite giant green mushroom, Mara. Now, I don't know what it is about Giramakala's designs that stand out to me. Maybe it's the one eye, or the decorations, or maybe just because I really like elephants, but what makes Giramakala one of the best demons in my opinion is the fact that in just about every game, he either nulls or reflects physical attacks. In the mainline games, with their press turn system, this absolutely breaks the game because of how often enemies are programmed to use their normal attacks. No matter how many turns they have, they just attack Giramakala and their turn immediately ends. I can't tell you how many times this has saved my bacon. He's not a bad offensive demon either, usually having some pretty good strength and physical attacks. He may not have the best agility or luck, but when the enemy's attacks bounce right off of you, do you really need that? Number 2. Yarlethotep. This should not come as a surprise to anyone. I mean, he's where I got my name from. The only thing that should come as a surprise is that he's not number one. Yarlethotep is one of the outer gods in the Lovecraft mythos, and he has a thousand forms. And unlike the other outer gods, he walks the earth as a human. What I like most about Nyarlathotep is his role in the Persona 2 games. He just has all the marks of a great villain. He's cunning, he's deceptive, he's manipulative, and he's an absolute genius. In the other games, he's never played any major roles, but he does have a good design, and even though this design is simple, I think this design does a great job of portraying him. That being a vaguely defined, faceless form that takes inspiration from other Lovecraftian characters as well. The only reason your Lethotep isn't higher is because he's only appeared in a few games, the most recent ones being Devil Survivor 1 and 2, in which he's one of the best demons of the Vile Race. We all know and love Nyar Lethotep for his role in the Persona series, but I'd like to see future mainline games and other spin-offs do something with him as well. Number 1. Satan. That's right, Satan. The first time most of you probably ever saw Satan was in Persona, where you probably thought it was cool that you could use Satan as an ally, but then you saw Lucifer and Beelzebub, and then you got confused. Well, Satan is my favorite demon, not only because of his design, not only because of his usefulness, but Satan's role in Megami Tensei actually changed my entire perspective on Christianity. About a year ago, I did a video explaining Satan and Lucifer's portrayal in the games, but here's the short version. You were probably led to believe that Satan is the devil, and that he detests God, but that's actually not true at all. It's kind of vague due to a spotty translation of the Bible into English, but if you actually look at the context of the passages, Satan isn't really a demon, he's more of an angel that exists to remind God of how corrupt and evil humans are and judges them. This is exactly how Megami Tensei portrays him. And now let's talk about his design. This is without doubt some of Kaneko's best work. A giant serpent with a skull-like face, six wings, six things, six arms, six fingers on each hand, two bone tentacles. I'll admit, if I was in charge of designing Satan, this is not what I would have came up with, but that's what I love about it. It's original. And then there's his apocalypse design, based on the beast with seven heads and ten horns. And this isn't even getting into his design from the older games. But what about in the gameplay itself? Well, Satan isn't usually usable as an ally in most games. But in the games he is usable in, he is easily one of the best demons. In Persona 3, he's one of the few late game Personas that doesn't require special fusion. And he learns the skill Black Viper, the strongest magic skill in the entire game, which deals massive almighty damage to one enemy. He was a bit nerfed in Persona 4, but in Persona 5 became a little better again thanks to Almighty Boost. In Devil Survivor 2, he's one of two demons that learns the skill Anti-Almighty. And then, in SMT4 Apocalypse, He's one of two demons that learns Almighty Pleroma. He also has plus 8 to physical, fire, and almighty attacks, and is the only demon in the game that can be summoned whose starting level is higher than 99. 
Satan is just everything I love about Megami Tensei all squeezed into one monster. A creative concept, an interesting backstory, an amazing design, and excellent in gameplay. And that is it for this video. I hope y'all enjoyed, and I'm also interested to hear what your guys' favorite demons are. As usual, be sure to check out my other links in the description, be sure to rate, comment, and or subscribe, and also tell me if you're interested in seeing more Mega 10 related top 10s, because I really enjoyed making this video. As usual, I also want to give a huge shout out to my Ko-Fi supporters, and yeah, until the next video, I will see you all later.